All right, this is our last section for stats. So we're looking at regression still, and we're still using what we learned in 10.1, but we're going to kind of expand on that. So we know we have two things that we're comparing, and we're seeing if they have a relationship or a correlation, but we cannot say one causes the other, right? So like a big head does not necessarily mean you have a higher IQ, right? So we, we can see if there's a relationship between them, but we can't say one causes the other. Okay, so that's kind of where we're going. Look at this. We still have this idea of a regression line. So now we're going to find basically the equation that fits our data the absolute best. And so we're going to definitely use technology for this because doing it by hand is, is um, not as accurate at all. Um, so we're going to do the same area that we've been doing with the stat in StatCrunch stat, and then the regression, simple linear, and then um, pick your data from your X and Y tables. So that's kind of where we're going. And what it's going to do is one of the things it gives us on the top is this equation here. Um, it is written a little bit backward. It's the same as B plus MX, right? So Y equals MX plus B. It's the same idea, but they do write the slope second. And so, um, but it's in that same place that we've been looking. So let's open this data we have here. Um, open in Safari. StatCrunch, here it goes. Perfect. I'm going to go back and split screen this. Perfect. Um, so we're here and we, we have this data and it's chocolate and Nobel Peace Prize. I'm not sure why. I think because the really one definitely can't cause the other is why they picked this data. But um, chocolate consumption per capita, um, I think it's kilograms per capita versus Nobel Peace Prize winners. And so here's the data. I put it into StatCrunch and I want to sh you to get this as your equation, right? So I'm going to go to stat. And then look down towards the middle is regression. It pops open. Um, and then we want simple linear because there are a lot of other regression lines, right? If it doesn't form a line, maybe it's a quadratic, right? Um, where it goes up and then back down or vice versa. Something different shape. But we're going to focus on linear. So we do simple linear. Our X values were chocolate. Our Y values were the noble data. And then we're going to keep everything the same for now. We want the hypothesis test to stay the same. Um, it's like R equals kind of like where it has intercept and slope, they equal zero or not zero. Remember, it's similar to if it equals zero, there's no relationship. If it doesn't equal zero, then there is a relationship. So I'm going to hit compute and I can see, I'm going to zoom in just so you can see that p-value. The second one is the slope. <clears throat> and that's the one we're basing our information off. So it's smaller than 0 0.001. Very small um, p-value means we are rejecting the null, right? So we're going to have evidence in favor of the not equal, which means we have evidence in favor of a relationship between chocolate consumption and winners of the Nobel Peace Prize. Okay, so the other thing we want to then, if we have evidence in favor of a linear relationship, then we can use the equation. Can you see it right there? It's noble equals negative three point, we'll do three seven plus 2.49 ish times chocolate. Okay, it's the same thing we have down here but we have, we can think of it as uh, plus 2.49. This times the chocolate and this, I guess, instead of this Y, hold on, let's call that in. Noble equals chocolate. So it's kind of cool the way in StatCrunch they use the words so that you remember it's chocolate times that. You don't mix up your X and Y. We still have this correlation coefficient. I'll have my arrow point at it. Um, oops, maybe a little more up. There we go, is 0.80 which is an okay relationship depending on your level, right? So depends on the level of accuracy you want. So that's how you're going to find your equation. So we are going to always look at, I wish I could circle it, but we're always going to look at that 
um, p-value and decide if the equation is a good fit or not. And we can also still scroll over and look, does your data look like it forms a line? We're looking at linear, right? That's a pretty good line. It's not bad. It's about 80%, right? Okay, so let's scroll down. What happens if this doesn't really form a line? Should we use the equation, the line of best fit, when the equation is, or the line, the data is not forming a line? No, we shouldn't. So let me bounce back to full screen here. So if I look at this um, little graph here, here it's saying, is the regression equation a good model? So I want you to add that if your P is low, right, if your P is low, then it is showing evidence of a linear relationship. Um, so evidence of a linear relationship, maybe, I don't want to write too much, but linear. If your P is value is high, then um, no linear relationship. They just have to be careful of our words, right? That's what makes all the wording part hard is like, how do we state that? So it's like, um, you know, if we reject the null, then we have significant evidence in favor of the whatever relationship it's talking about. If we fail to reject the null, then we have, um, you know, significant evidence not in favor of whatever relationships they're claiming. claiming. So if the p-value is low, we are in this world right here. Then we can use that equation to predict. So we could put in a chocolate consumption and find the corresponding noble um, amount of people. Or we could put in a noble and predict the chocolate. Okay, so we can use the equation. If you're, you have a high p-value, right, then there's no linear relationship. That equation isn't a good fit. You're in this world right here. That means you have to use the mean. Circle that. The mean of the y's or the x's, whatever you're looking for. It's usually the y, but you could do the mean. So up here, I do show using the equation, you get this value out. Um, I think a lot of you have used equations um, a lot before. So you're basically just putting values into that equation. We'll do some more examples down below. Or you have to find the mean. Um, and let's move on to a different idea. We've kind of looked at that one. So residuals are this idea of the difference between what the equation gives you for an answer, so you're, you can use the equation, it's a good fit, and what the actual answer is. So a residual is the difference between, you could think of this as actual or, it'd be helpful I had a T in there, actual or observed, right? When I see it, or it's the actual value minus the predicted. So that is called a residual. The difference between what you predicted with your equation and what the real value is. Um, least squares truly is just the sum of all, the possible sum of all the different squares. Um, I have a graph of it. It's this part right here. Basically, least squares idea is I want the least di distance from every single point. This is the method that the calculator uses. Yeah, where'd it go? So this is what the calculator uses. And it's what your graphing calculator, this method is widely used. So it's like your calculator does it for you. Okay. So um, residual plots are a plot of the difference between your observed and what was predicted. Like how far off are you really? And you can do those in the same area in StatCrunch. It does have a residual plot. Um, you have to click it. I'll show it. It's a little bit tricky. This gives you an example. So if I have this coordinate point right here, eight, four, 
then I'm putting eight into the equation line. So here's the equation that it gave us right here. This little thing should be on the Y. It just moved over. Um, but we have really one plus X. So if we put in eight, we get out nine, right? Eight plus one. So our equation, our prediction is nine, but the actual was four. What's the residual? Well, it's always going to be the actual minus your um, uh, predicted value. So our residual is negative five for this one. Okay, we're negative five off. So it's lower. You know, your residual is obviously off. So I think I showed that this is going to be that point right here. And you can see it's it's down below by negative five. So if the residual is positive, like this 11, then this would be up. It'd be off by 11. And that's the least squares idea. What it does is it, it looks at that and it predicts the, the best equation. It's kind of cool. So you might have some questions on what's the residual. That's a super important thing. Like if I'm using something to predict the future and then I get the right answer, I should look back and see how far off was my prediction. Should I continue to use this equation to, you know, predict the amount of sales in my business? Or should I use this equation to, I don't know, do something in the medical field? Or, um, you know, should I be changing it up somehow? Okay. All right. So residual plot, when we plot this, um, the residual plot should not have any obvious patterns. We've seen this before in the normal too. Like it shouldn't have a lot of obvious patterns and it should not become wider or thinner um, when you view it from the left to right. Okay. So let's look at just this data that we have real quick. Um, I'm going to close that out. I'm going to go back to stat. I'm going to go to simple linear and I'm back in the same spot that we are for all of chapter 10. So it's like chocolate noble. And then we have, it's kind of comes up a little different on the, on the um, iPad, but this graph section down here. So it says fitted plot line. If I click that, that fitted plot line is your scatter plot with the line of best fit drawn on there for you. And these are all the other options. Um, residuals. I like the QQ of residuals. Um, I'm going to see what this one looks like. Histogram of the residuals. I don't know. Why not? Residuals versus X values. Predicted values. Okay. I think we have enough plots. <coughs> I hit compute and then look. There's our line with our fitted line is what they call that one. So there's our index. Basically, some are above, some are below for residuals, right? And there's not really a pattern. Here is the <coughs> histogram of it. <laughs> there we go. Um, I've never looked at the histogram. This is the QQ plot. It, it has, uh, starts to try to look like it has a pattern and then it doesn't really. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, and then this one, where does it say where it is? The residuals, oops. Uh, I don't know where it all went. Oh, well, residue, simple linear. I, I lost my graph that I really liked. <clears throat> I was choking on something. I liked this one. We we didn't, I don't know. We'll just do those two for now. So compute, do, 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 do. So we were looking at residuals um, versus chocolate. That's kind of a cool graph. And predicted versus re residuals, predicted versus residuals. We really like the QQ one, I think is the main one they want you to use. And whether or not it, you can see the pattern, um, whether it has a pattern on that. Um, I don't think you, I think it gives you the residual plot on like one question. We don't focus on it. We probably should because it's a pretty cool idea, but um, we don't focus on it too much. But you can still get to the graphs in StatCrunch. All right, let's move on to our last, I think this is the last concept. Yeah, 
Our last idea is an outlier. So what happens if I have an outlier? Well, we know when we have data and we have an outlier, like it throws the mean off, it throws the standard deviation off. What does it do with this is it does throw off your equation. They call it influential point because it is two values, right? It's a point. Um, so look at this and consider this. So if we have this influential point way over here, right? Look what it did. Our equation went from here to here. And, and it definitely doesn't go through most of the data. So probably statistically, we would throw out our outlier and redo the problem without the outlier. That's really probably where we'd go. Okay, token, and now it made my nose run. <laughs> so um, I, I don't know if I really need to say much about more, much more about influential point. I think those graphs show you the big idea. It really throws it off. All right, here is kind of a fun, okay, it's a sad example. Not a fun, but to me, it makes it more realistic. So back in 1986, I had to think about the year. I was nine years old. So what was I, third grade? I think I was in third grade. And we sat and we watched this lady right here be the teacher in space. And she was going to teach us a lesson from space. And all these other people here were all astronauts. She was actual teacher. Um, I can't remember where she was from, but I know the runner up was from Idaho. Um, so they had space programs like major back then, like we, everyone wanted to go to the moon and all that. Um, not as big anymore. What they decided to do was lift off, even though it was like cold temperatures that day. And um, we can do a very simple um, oops, linear regression that's going to show us whether or not the challengers, what that was called, should have lifted off that day. So here's my data. These are temperatures, and these are how many O-rings failed. One O-ring failure, you blow up, like the spaceship does not make it. So if you look at the data, there are times where two O-ring failed, um, and there are some where um, uh, none and one. So we're going to go to stat. We're going to go to regression, simple linear, and I'm going to put in the temperature against the failure, and we'll leave everything else the same, kind of keep it that same, and we're going to go to here. So um, our R value is pretty low. It's got a negative, and it's at 50. These are people's lives, right? Our p-value on the slope line is 0 0.01, which could go either way depending on your level. But if we use 95% accuracy, then, um, you know, then we're going to fail. If we use 95, then we're going to um, fail to reject because it's lower. And that means we do have a relationship between the two values. So then we could use this equation up here to predict for our day. So let me go back. Hold on. This way. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, here's my temp, my failure. Okay, so that's just the data down below in case you wanted to put it in to stat crunch. But our equation was failure equals 3.698-ish minus 0 0.0475 times the temperature. Okay, we can use our equation because it says it's a pretty good fit. Here's our equation. There's our data. It doesn't look super linear. It looks like here or there, but um, we'll go back over. And we can see that it's 50 point or negative 0. 0.51. So it's like a really, it's a negative half relationship there. So the day that this took off, the degrees was 51 degrees. I mean, 31 degrees, 31. So we're going to take and see what F will equal. We have 3.698 minus 0. 0.0475 times 31. So let me get out my calculator, 3.698 minus 0 0.0475 times three, and I get 
fail is 3.5555. Okay, what does that tell me? It tells me if it is 31 degrees, a very basic linear says, you're probably going to have three O-ring failure. One O-ring failure, you blow up. So it absolutely should not have taken off that day. And what happened is it did, it did blow up. It was crazy. Um, and for me, of course, I'm bringing this up, you know, it's from 1986 because it was very memorable as a, as a nine-year-old child um, watching it blow up and watching your teacher start crying and then turn the TV off um, and not knowing what to do with a lot of students who just watched something super tragic. It was crazy. So it's memorable to me. So why is it important to do stats? Why is it important to have specific rules and to try to follow those rules and stats is because you can predict things that are extremely important and could, could be the difference um, on somebody living, right? Especially in the medical field or in the space program. Okay, let's go down and look at this one. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just open Split view, close. Um, okay, I got to go back to this data. Perfect. So um, in this link, I have all the data sets so that I didn't have to put them in. So the data shows chest size and weight of several bears. Find the regression equation, letting chest size be the independent. That's our X variable. Y would then be dependent on X so then find the best predicted weight of a bear with this chest size. So here's our, um, in stat crunch on the side there, there's our chest size and our weight. So we're going to go to stat, um, regression, simple linear, and it wants X to be our chest size, right? That's what I said, yep. And then we want our weight of the bear to be there. Everything else we just kind of keep the same. And then here we are. So look at our slope, it's 0 0.002. So it is definitely low. So we're gonna reject the null and that is evidence in favor of a linear correlation. Again, look at the graph. It helps me to find if I'm getting the right, you know, if I'm going in the right area. So for this one, our equation would then be the weight is equal to negative 295.73 plus 15.67 times that chest size. So that's our equation. And can we use that equation? Yes. Yep, we can. So what we'll do from here is actually put that data into our equation. So we can use our equation. Maybe I'll put that on here. So our p-value was equal to 0 0.0002. Um, this is low. So, and here's our level, right? So this is low. So we can use the equation. So it gives us 40 inches, the bear with this chest size of 40 inches. So we would do 40 in here, right? So let me put that into my calculator and see what I get. I'm going to take negative 295.73 um, plus 15.67 times that by 40. And I got 331. So W equals 331.07. Okay. Is this result close? So we're looking at that residual. Is this result close to the actual 282? So we would take our, this is a residual, right? So the actual was 282 and we'd subtract 331.07. So I got about negative 49.07. So it was, a, the prediction was 49. Um, what are these pounds, right? Yeah, because it's weight. I was just trying to remember if it was weight or the chest size. I don't know on a bear if that's kind of off. I, I lean towards 
um, that that's pretty far off. 49 pounds seems like a lot, but when a bear weighs 300, is it really that much? It's kind of iffy for me. So um, that is a residual. Analyzing the residual is a little iffy on that one. You could probably argue either way. Okay. If it was like 200, then it would be very easy. Like that residual is terrible, right? And, and we're way off. If it was five, that's easy too. Five pounds off isn't that big of a deal. Okay, listed below are blood pressure measurements obtained from the same woman. Find the regression equation, letting the right arm blood pressure be a predictor variable. Find the best predicted blood pressure in the left arm, given that the blood pressure in the right arm was 95. I skipped some of the words in there, but I didn't know until I saw this problem that your left and your right arm give a different blood pressure. And that's probably why they always go with the right, I think. Every time I go in, they try to do the right. I'm a cancer survivor, so they actually can't use my right. So it's like always like, oh, wait, no, you got to use the other one. So um, kind of weird, but let's go back. And here's our right arm and left arm in my stack crunch. We're going to go to simple linear and right arm and left arm and hit compute. Okay, so what's our level? 0 0.05, so 95 and 0.05. Look at this one, our p-value was equal to 0 0.0749. So that's higher. This is higher. So I can't use the equation for predictions. Can't use it. So what am I going to do to predict? I'm going to do the mean. So let's go back to close out of this. How do I do the mean of the left arm? Because I'm given the right arm was 95. We do stat, and then we go to summary stats. We haven't done it in a while. And then it's under columns. And I want the left arm, and I want the mean. So this one always has like a bunch of them, but I just want the mean. Okay, compute. So 100, so the mean of the left arm is equal to 156.2. So that's where I can't use the equation. I have to use the 156. <clears throat> the right arm is 95. Yep, yeah. and it doesn't even matter what the right arm is. We use the mean of the left. Okay. That is, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. That is the two big difference right there. Low P, I can use the equation higher P than my value. I can't use the equation. I have to use the mean, which again was stat columns again, uh, or excuse me, stat summary stat, because it's a summary of stuff, and then do that one. Okay. All right. That's all I got for you today.